Well, greetings everyone and welcome to This Australian Save of Football Manager. A big shout out to my mate Skull Duggery who has done the vast majority of the grunt work in getting this database together. It's something that we both have been working on for a number of years and iterations of Football Manager. As an Australian, football, or soccer as they call it here, I've never understood that, is not the number one winter sport. Indeed, for much of my life, it has been a distant fourth to AFL, Rugby League and Rugby Union. The great Johnny Warren was even led to call his autobiography the controversial title. Sheila's Wogs and Poofters, as there was the perception that real Australians didn't play soccer. It was a game from Europe and only immigrants played it. For those not in the know, Johnny Warren was a well-respected player, coach, administrator and broadcaster in this country. In the world of Australian soccer, he is one of the elites. So, growing up in Sydney, we followed the rugby league avidly, so our expectations of what a tough footballer looked like was akin to this. So when we'd see things like this, we would be pretty dismissive of the game and those that played it. That being said, we would still sit up and take notice when the World Cup and FA Cup came around. Mind you, we would call it the Far Cup, which is indicative of the profanity that many Australians, myself included, partake in from time to time. The one redeeming thing about Australia with respect to football is that we are a sport-loving nation. And as Australia started to gain some success by making World Cups, the attitude to the game in this nation started to change. The advent of the A-League in 2004 started to bring the game further into the public consciousness and while it still doesn't compete with the other winter codes the popularity of the sport is growing nearly 1.5 million australians are actively pursuing some form of soccer in their lives out of a population of 26 million which is a 20 percent increase on the previous year the recent success of the women's world cup that was hosted in australia and new zealand has further brought the game into the spotlight in this country one of the things that I've always been fascinated by is the promotion relegation system of football around the world. We don't really have any sports that do this in Australia, but our goal with a database that has been put together here by Skullduggery is to remedy that. We may have gone a little overboard on this, but it is nice to see other teams and other divisions. Many of the teams in this database are real teams that play in different competitions around the nation, but there are many that have been specifically created for the database. In this save, we will be taking a trip to the Northern Territory, which is a vast expanse of land in Central and Northern Australia. The Northern Territory possesses one of the world's most famous natural landmarks, Uluru, as well as probably the most Australian marketing campaign in this country. The Northern Territory Premiership is in the FFA State League Division 2, so there is plenty of work to be done for us to get to the A-League competition. The club I will be managing is called Humpty Doo, and yes, this is a real place located about 40 kilometres southeast of Darwin. We have a generous owner who has brought some of the most promising players to aid us in our first season, but they are too good to stay with us forever, so the challenge will be to hold on to them for as long as possible and train up and buy future stars to keep the club's momentum going. So now it's time to watch this idiot try and play some football manager. Well, here we are, guys. Humpty Do have hired Dick Splash to be their new club head coach. Eyebrows have been raised in the soccer world at the appointment of the inexperienced 42-year-old, and he is sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media. The first time at Fanny Bay Oval. I've wanted to do this save for quite a while, and I did actually start it in FM23. What I am very grateful for is the fact that FM24 allows backward compatibility with regards to old saves from FM23 so this save will actually continue into FM24 when we get started. The premise of the save is that a rich owner has come in and bought the most promising juniors from around the place to bolster the ranks for Humpty Doo to try and get them promoted out of the second division of the state leagues right up into the A-League. From memory that uh, puts us in about the 8th tier of Australian football. Now obviously these tiers don't exist in real life but they are just the weird imaginings of Skullduggery and myself and uh, we've always wanted to do something like this so let's get into it. As with the way norm things normally go with me, the names you're going to see are probably familiar to you if you've watched any of the Marvel World saves. I know it's not to everyone's taste but we'll go with it anyway. So we have a number of signings there. Uh, Leo Keating and Daniel Collins are 
provided for us, but a few of the other names, like Wet Fuss, for instance, you might recognise Doug Fleeballs and Wayne Kerr have also been used. Harry Dixon Balls have been used, and of course, Dick Splash. They've all appeared in the Marble World universe. So I'm sure you'll get to know plenty of these players. One thing you do need to know is that these players will not be with us forever. They are too good to be down this far in the competitions. There are 21 teams in the competition. We are expected to win this competition, which is not a real surprise when you see the lineup that we have. But you never know. There could be a few teams that throw up a surprise or two for us. Our early form in the friendlies has been very encouraging, winning games very comfortably and scoring a lot of goals in the process. So the first game we're going to look at today, a little bit later, is actually going to be the Australia Cup first round. Now this is a knockout competition that has all the teams from all over Australia in it and we were going to be playing at Murdoch University who are in a division higher than us. So that will be a true test. And then after that, there is also going to be a Coca-Cola Central West Cup first round game that we'll also watch in this first episode. We don't know who we're playing yet, but we will soon find out. To bolster our goalkeeping ranks, we've actually just signed a young fella called Alexander Fisher to join us just to give us a little bit more depth in the keeping position. So the formation we're going with is a 4-2-3-1. We want to focus on attacking. We've got the players to do it and I reckon we can actually put a few goals past these guys in this first game that you're just about to watch. And Leo Keating is going to wear the armband today and lead the team out onto the field. So we've kicked off here, there's nothing much happening at the moment, we've both had a shot each and it is still nil-nil after 10 minutes of play. Looks like Dick Splash has got a slight injury there, we'll see if he can run it off. See how we go, so Fields has got the ball for Melville, yes, can see Splash is definitely hindered there. Keating takes the ball at the back, puts it forward to Kerr. Splash trying to run onto it. There's Dixon Balls there, and Robertson makes the save. Yes, we're going to take Splash off. He is succumbing to that, and it's still early days. We have the manpower to actually play without him, so we're going to try and do that. So Beans to Farts now, and he kicks it forward, and that is Collins there in the left there. Kicks it back to Beans there. And Flea Balls pushes it forward to Dixon Balls, who has a shot but misses. So 28 minutes in, and it's still nil-nil. Dixon Balls to Flea Balls. Kicks it back to Keating, who's in control at the back there. Kicks it all the way back to Dick Meister, the keeper there. And back to Keating as they are building up patiently. Toss a cock off, tries to push it through there, but his pass is intercepted there. And Frank and Beans is back there, back to Dick Meister, and we go again. Beans from the back, pushes it forward to Fuckboy, and there is Tossa Coco. And it is Boy again who kicks it back to Fleaballs. Fleaballs has a long shot, very ambitious there, and puts it over the bar. 32 minutes in now, still nil-nil. Team still looking for a combination, I would say. Still very early days. And it is going to be Tossa Kokoff with the corner. Puts it in and it is a good effort there, but unfortunately saved by the keeper. Keating clearly our best player at the moment, leading from the front. There's a new instruction there from Mr. Cool there, wants us to work it into the box. But we've made it to half time with a deadlock here. As we continue on and we start the second half now. Again, a quiet start here, nothing too much going on. The boys are starting to get a little bit nervous. We've got a couple of red, uh, yellow cards there as well. As Robertson, the opposition goalkeeper, kicks it out. And it is flea balls down to Kerr there. And Bannerman, who is on the right hand, is dispossessed there. Can't actually make the play there. And Dixon Balls though, he has, he has broken the deadlock. What a great goal that was. Very, very good play there to dispossess the attacker there and actually take the ball for himself. 
and then put the ball in the back of the net. So 1-0. Hopefully that will actually get the boys rolling and the floodgates will start to open. So well done to Harry. Great goal. First goal scorer of the year for the club. Keating with a free kick now and he puts it in there. It is defended well though by the opposition. And there's Dixon balls back to Beans there. So the control seems to be a little bit better. That's a really clever pass there to Collins and he crosses it in and Bannerman on the right has put it in. It is 2-0. Well done Barry, great goal. Even better somersault mate. Or forward roll, whatever you want to call it. And it is Collins with a great cross on the left there. Uh, just missed out on, on getting boy, but Bannerman picks up the scraps and puts it in very, very well. Okay, so there's 60 minutes in now, 2 0. Comfortable, but we don't want to rest on our laurels there. Dickmeister takes the ball there. Was under no real pressure though, and he's just holding on to it and looking at his options, puts it straight down the middle there. It's defended well though and pushed forward by uh, Murdoch University. As we move in to 78th minute now, it is 2 0. We seem to be pretty comfortable here, and that's a good save by Dick Meister there. Well done. Just taking his time. Winding that clock down, puts it straight down the guts again, and it's Boy there, back to Fleeballs. Fleeballs is able to pass out to Kerr, who puts it back to Bannerman, and then Kerr finishes off with a beautiful goal. Keeper had no idea there, so 3-0, quite comfortable in the end there. Just looking at the replay there, Bannerman controlling it well, puts a beautiful ball in through to Kerr. Takes his time, owns up his shot, and then nails it. Great, great effort. So just winding down the clock now. I think we should be pretty safe in this five minutes of real time. Uh, Dixon Balls just puts it over the bar there. Not too bad. And he will take the corner there. Phil's ass has come on for Wayne Kerr there. He just finished out the game for us. Our last substitution. And Beans to Bannerman there, Flea Balls and Zars does well there. Collins is going to look and he scores his first goal for the season, 4-0. A very, very clinical display against Murdoch University today, who again, remembering that they are actually higher than us in the competition. So, not so much in the competition, but in the pyramid of, of the competitions. They're in a higher division. So to beat them 4-0 all as well for a pretty good season overall, I would suspect. And there we are, full time, 4-0. Very, very happy there. Good to see um, pretty good contributions from all the players today. Now Dick Splash has been injured and he's going to be out for two to three weeks with a hamstring problem. Now in the second round of the FFA or the Tim Cahill Cup, which is the one that we just played, we get Dandenong Thunder. Now Dandenong Thunder, uh, again, they are again a division higher than the team that we just played. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Now this is the team that we have drawn for the Coca-Cola Cup. Now this team is actually in our own division. And we are just preparing for that game now. So you can see a few changes in the side that beat Murdoch University. We've got another university here, University of Zuri. Now this is a team that are in our competition. So this again will give us an idea of what our competition will be like. You'll notice there are quite a few changes there. Nick Doff has come in for the splash there. Phil's arse is darting as well on the left in, instead of Collins. And you'll also notice that the Nigerian Prince email scammers in the team today. So it'll be interesting to see how they go. Levi Goldschmeckel as well, uh, taking Barry Bannerman's place. All those players on the bench, though, waiting for an opportunity. So let's see how they go, shall we? And it is Tosikokov pushing forward to Zars, and Zars gets his first goal of the season. Doesn't seem to be any complaints about the onside there. So New Beauty 1 0 after seven minutes. 
He's done it very well to bring it down there, and Zas, no, no one really in front of him there except for the keeper, and he's drilled at home very, very emphatically. So, great start for the boys, 1-0. Oh, we've got some good performances already from the guys, and it is going to be Zas to put the corner in. And Scammer picks up the dregs at the back there, toss the cock off to Keating and Banks is there as well. Trying to get around his man, but pushes it back to Astley, then back to Banks. Astley again, toss a cock off, puts the ball through, but it is actually intercepted by the defence. Keating kicks it back to Goldschmeckel, who puts a ball through to Wilkins, and oh, we've got an offside call, I believe, there. Yes, so just been called offside there. But it was some pretty enterprising build up play there. There's Zars and the, key, the corner into Keating, and Keating puts it away. 2 0 now to the boys in the 15th minute. So very, very important goal that, just to give us a bit of a breathing space and a little bit more freedom to play the way we want to play. Okay, so the Nigerian Prince email scammer there, back to Astley there, toss a cock off, back to Zars, crosses it in and Bill Wilkins gets above the keeper and puts the ball away. Very, very good goal there, 3-0 now. The boys are going on a spree here. I think this is going to be a comfortable win. And we are also expected to win this competition, this Coca-Cola uh, West competition. It's a more regional competition and it doesn't have all the teams from the West, just the ones in the lower divisions. So we should be pretty good here. Now, even though we are Central Australia really, or North, Northern Australia, we are still classified in the Western section of Australia. The Eastern Seaboard are, you know, teams like New South Wales, Queensland, Tasmania and Victoria, those sorts of divisions there. And then you've got South Australia, Northern Territory and then Western Australia in the Western Conference there. So another goal there, uh, very, very comfortable goal there. Nigerian Prince pretty well does it all himself, to be honest. And does it with ease, beats the keeper. The poor keeper had no real counter to that. So 4-0 after 20 minutes. 12 shots to nil as well. That's very emphatic. And we're not even through. We've only just gone halfway through the first half. So to Wilkins again, pushes it forward. And it is defended well there. But Keating with the follow up there. Um, they've tried to turn defence into attack pretty quickly and they're doing quite well as they They've put it forward, but Keating is back there again and uh, kicks it back to Fisher, the keeper. And toss a cock off. He's going to push forward again and he's dispossessed there. Um, Astley to Banks and then Wilkins puts a beautiful ball through to Zas and Zas scores goal number five. 5-0 after 32 minutes of play. The boys can put the cue in the rack, I think. Just heading into half time now, but uh, a very emphatic 17 shots to one on goal. Just crossing in just before half time. It looks like we've achieved a penalty as well, and Zas is going to step up to the mark and make it 6 0 just before half time. I would say a very, very comfortable and uh, can't be any happier with the boys, mate. What a, what a great performance in this first half. Considering we've left a few players on the bench that would normally be starting. So, very good to see there. 18 shots to one there. Just going to make um, a substitution or two here. Bannerman's going to come on for Goldschmeckel, who was just a little bit tired there. Uh, I'm just going to change his role a little bit to a wing back. And then uh, looking at some of the other players. That yellow card for Rick Astley is a bit of a concern. And we also want to give Boy another chance. He actually performed okay in the last game, but we want to give him a little bit more. And because we've got four subs, we're even thinking of getting Eric Shen on for Regis Quifa. As we prepare for the second half, here we go. Immediately on the attack, Shen down the right-hand side. Very happy to be out there. And Fisher comes out, and it is 
Wilkins to Scammer and then the boy has a good crack at it. He's saved and then forced for a corner. Keaton with the corner crosses it in and it is a great effort from Boy. He's actually got his first goal of the season. So we go to 7-0 now. Can we get to double figures? That is the question. A very good cross from the corner from Keating and Boy does the honours for us. Great job. And Astley has a free kick, pushes it forward there and Zas is there holding onto the ball, holding it up for Tosikokov who then puts it in but the defence is there. And the defence is actually turning into attack here although he's isolated there and Astley is able to get the ball very easily. Banks back to Astley there and then it is the defence kicking it back and they're trying to go on attack quickly there but we have plenty of cover there and Zas puts it in for 8-0. 51 minutes into the game and to be honest even though this is the coca-cola cup it's actually throwing down the gauntlet to the rest of the teams in the division as i've already said azuri are a part of our competition so we're really telling them who's boss here at the moment zas again it's had a strong game zas and keating there as well um, but it's gone back now to scammer who is just holding the ball up to astley He's put it out wide to Zas again. And it is Eric Sheldon's put it over the bar there. A bit disappointing. He probably could have done a little bit better with that. But uh, in saying that, be good to see Phil Zas Four goals and two assists. I don't think you're going to get many better games than that out of anybody. So Azuri would be happy. They haven't conceded in about 20 minutes. So that's actually quite an achievement for them. And they are... Defending again, but trying to get out of the fence. Back to Scammer. Kicks a, a beautiful ball forward to Boy, to Wilkins, and Wilkins. I don't know, that's got a Stormtrooper rating of about four or five, but he had an open goal there and couldn't put it away. A bit disappointing. But again, we're up 8 0. You can't be too disappointed with that, can you? But Azuri keep coming, and they're doing quite well here. They're pushing it forward. Can they get a goal to get some sort of pleasure out of this game? It's been a pretty dismal effort from them. And this boy on his own puts the ball away. His second goal of the season, 9-0. So we've got about uh, seven minutes plus injury time to see if we can get goal number 10. Beautiful ball from Tosikok off to Wilkins and Boy there without anyone around him puts the ball away without any problem whatsoever. And Wilkins, whoa, that's a wild attempt. But again, he was a fair way out there. Just winding down the clock now as Wilkins. And there's Boy, he's put it away, but it has been disallowed. So uh, Touchy had a bit of a sense of humour there. Missouri just counting down the clock now, just seeing, and let's see, yes, he's clearly in front there, that, that's, there's, oh, yeah, there's not a lot in that, but yes, 9-0, very, very good performance by all of the boys, but again, for me, it was uh, Zas who was the man there. Just checking the draw for the next Coca-Cola, and we've drawn Wyala Wanderers, who once again are a division above us, so... That game will come up fairly soon. We'll see if we actually watch that one or not. It just depends on a few other results. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for today. Thanks for everything, everyone, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.